a pleasure it is to follow the boy wonder who has hardly read the bill by the Senate. Mr Speaker, um, Mr. Speaker, this bill is one which Labor supports on balance, but I think the real phrase here is on balance, because it is a bill made up of the good, the bad and the potentially ugly. Mr Speaker, we'll be watching very carefully to see its implementation. The good, sir, is undoubtedly the modifying of the thin capitalisation rules to ensure that banks and financial institutions pay a rather larger slice of tax when they're offshore domiciled to contribute to our economy. I think that would be welcomed by all sides of the House. The bad is the approved issuer levy reduction. Now, there are a number of important reasons why it is, in our view, uh, very, very uh, questionable to reduce the approved issue of levy, and we are going to be watching this one like a hawk. The first, the first is that it erodes the tax base associated with financial institutions at a very interesting time. At a time when one major bank increased its profit declared today by over 30 per cent, and the sector as a whole, according to the latest KPMG survey, increased its profit by a quarter in the last year, by 25 per cent in the last year, where GDP was flat and New Zealanders' living standards, if anything, went backwards, this government is giving institutions like the banks a net reduction in tax through this bill. What's happening in Europe? France and Germany have said the real economy is bearing a big load in the recession. It's time for the financial sector to bear a load and both the Conservative governments of France and Germany are looking at bringing in a financial transactions tax. Now, we're not advocating that. It's pretty difficult for New Zealand to do it in isolation. But I do point out that this bill is reducing the net tax burden on financial institutions. Now, why might that be a problem as well as the fact that we're losing revenue that we pay for schools and hospitals? Well, here's, here's a, an economic paradox. It is, because of this bill, cheaper to source funds from offshore now than it was and cheaper relative to funds saved and sourced onshore. In other words, it means, relatively speaking, that foreign banks and foreign source funds are taxed more lightly and domestically sourced funds and institutions are taxed more heavily, thus providing an incentive to shift capital out of the country and to favour foreign institutions over local ones. Why would you do that? Not you, Mr Chairman, it's not your idea. Why would the government want to do that? Why would the government want to provide an additional incentive for foreign-owned, domiciled and source banks? I note that we're debating this on the day that several ministers, one of them sitting in the front row, the Honourable Morris Williamson, have been overturned in the High Court in a rare move. The High Court has said the ministers misapplied the National Economic Interest Test and wrongly favoured a foreign domiciled company in the purchase of the Cray for Farms. Tonight we're debating a tax bill that favours foreign banks over New Zealand financial institutions by reducing the approved issuer levy that applies to foreign institutions. Actually, might we think about the reverse? Might we think about ensuring that foreign financial institutions in New Zealand are actually paying their fair share and getting beneath the question, how come the real economy is flat and the banking sector increased its profit between a quarter and a third in one year? No one's alleging malpractice. Nobody's saying that there's necessarily been any breach of the law or anything corrupt. Far from that. But the fact remains that one sector of the economy, and it's not dairying, banking has had a stellar skyrocket year in 2011. And ordinary New Zealanders are wondering how they're going to pay the mortgage and the bill and put food on the table. So all I'm saying is this isn't a big bill, this isn't a major piece of legislation, but this is another small let out that allows foreign capital a lighter tax burden in New Zealand. So the bad bit about this bill is, and, and it's against the background, Mr Chairman, that foreign source capital institutions already have a lower tax burden than New Zealand, Mr Chairman. 
than New Zealand domicile capital. We tax savings in New Zealand too heavily, but we don't tax savings sourced from offshore heavily enough. It's already unbalanced, and this bill makes the balance worse. So we will be monitoring very closely the effects of this bill. Mr Chairman, I want to, having agreed with the government on the thin capitalisation rules, having clearly disagreed with them, that was the good and the bad, the potentially ugly is the other major part of this bill, uh, which is the Foreign Investment Fund regime. Now, this is a hideously complex piece of tax law, and for listeners out there, I'm just going to try to get my head around it and help listeners. What this bill does is it affects a particular class of investor, not the little guys. The little guys aren't helped by this bill. Anybody owning less than 10% of a foreign investment fund gets no help from this bill. So mum and dad at home, if they're a middle-class Kiwi, they have retirement funds, superannuation funds invested in an offshore fund, Fidelity, State Street, I don't know, whatever. They get no help from this bill. But if you are a large investor, and this may go to some of the issues that our colleagues from New Zealand First raised, owning more than 10% but less than 50%, of a foreign investment fund, you get a tax break. Now that may or may not be the right thing to do. There are some design issues and we understood the advice of officials on, on this matter about making the law symmetrical in some regards to past practice and ironing out some definitional problems. And that's why the bill's here before us today. We're going to give the advice a chance. But I want to lay down a very clear marker on behalf of the Labour opposition. This bill is under watch. This provision is under watch because I'm sure listeners can hear a pattern emerging. The AIL part makes it cheaper for foreign financial institutions. They pay less tax. The foreign investment fund rules part means that people owning less than 10% of a fund, that's 99.99% of New Zealanders, they get no help. They're no better off. But the few big rollers who may have a large stake worth more than 10% of a fund or an active investment in a substantial offshore company, they get extra help. So New Zealanders need to ask themselves whether Mr Bridges was in fact right in his sunny Bay of Plenty optimism and his permatan, which was... And his lovely sparkling... And his lovely, sparkling, white teeth. Oh, that's beautiful. They have to ask, is he right for the sunny optimism? Because guess what, Mr Bridges? It's only the big fish that gets the minnows here. The little fish, the 99% of small business people that that member's got in his electorate miss out. They're at the bottom of the barrel, Mr Bridges, and this bill gives them nothing. And in fact, if they're like most of the small business people in my electorate who have to borrow capital to survive, they're going to be paying more because the foreign financial institution just got a get-out-of-jail-free, collect 200 bucks when you pass go Christmas present from the ever-honourable Peter Dunn. By goodness, he's earned his money for the capitalist class, hasn't he? The perennial Santa Claus of Rontier capitalism is back in business again. God, he's had more allegiance shifts than the Maori party's had leadership coups. Goodness me, I, I predict this, that by 2013, Peter Dunn will be back pouring at the glass and the doors at the end of the Labour opposition corridor, saying there's been a misunderstanding. There's been a misunderstanding. And we've got bad news for David Clark, who has the revenue portfolio. Peter Dunn's after his job. <laughs> Peter Dunn's after his job. When John Key goes... When John, now, Mr. Henari, your chances of getting back in West Auckland look every thinner. When your mate Honeke goes off to the World Bank, what's happening to your poll ratings? 
When Hone Ki goes to the World Bank and their minister comes back begging for a job from us, this spills all over Red Rover. Uh, Todd McClay. Yeah, thank you very much. Never have.